I trust you. That's a bit silly, isn't it? So do I do that flip thing now? <laughs> no, because we need to start over starting. Oh, now so we say hi. Hi, guys. Hi we, guys. I don't do the hi, guys. <laughs> but I can flip this now. Um, yeah, if you want to, I guess. Hey, welcome to our live stream, people. Um, but now I've got all that over it. Mm, oh, I didn't know it was going to do that. Maybe it looks up to me, but sorry about that. You don't need any of these. Maybe. Sorry, technical difficulties. Everyone. It's because of lockdown. <laughs> we we are criminals. We have been put into lockdown. We cannot. Where can I put this that I don't need it? Comments. Well, video output below. YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Uh, have you set this? You haven't. Oh, yeah, that's set. That's it, right? Are you That's okay. the right setting. Sorry, our internet's being a bit slow. It's trying to fix that now. That's okay. Maybe it'll come back. It was good before when I tested. Yeah, well, it's, that's on the fastest okay. internet we've got. Well, apologies if the video is low quality. Um, as usual, please let us know if our sound is bad or clicking or anything. Other than that, hi, welcome to our live stream. As the title suggests, people will be retouching a photo live this evening for us or morning for those of you joining us in Europe. Why have you got the professional voice on? Know. This is not your normal hi guys voice. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I didn't really want to add anything else. Did you want to add anything else before I put us down in your little corner? Um. No, you can put this <laughs> down in the little corner. I was trying to find Katie's file. I found it. I think I found it. Is that? I'll see. I don't know if this is going to come up right. So that's going to sit. I've got to put up with this, don't I? Maybe if I stick this. People are saying hi. People are saying hi. Um. All right. So I'm just going to do a retouch. So this was shot. So I'm getting that out of. That's right. <laughs> I'll get. <coughs> Who put iced tea in it? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so we're just going to do a retouch, and I'm doing a retouch of. I'm going to start off with the Sony picture. If I get through this really quick, there's another picture, actually, both shot in Brisbane. Um. And I might just quickly talk you through this mess of colours and things you're seeing. So I've done a slight transition to the way I'm marking pictures. And unfortunately, this, um, this shoot is halfway between <clears throat> how I used to do it and how I do it now. So I use different colour coding now, which has made it very confusing for me on this one. Sorry, this sounds very confusing. <laughs> Normally... I have the model mark by pressing, I can't remember what number it is, but the model's pictures would come up with the red picture. And then every, anything, no, sorry, they came up with the pink color. Whatever number I gave them for the pink color was their selection. And anything that they thought they absolutely loved came up with orange. Then I would come in and... Do you want to go and talk to Sheree for a minute, please? My wife has decided to put her phone on speaker and talk to people while we're recording. Um, so, oh, good girl, Beck. <laughs> so with the way, um, that was how I used to work and any picture I liked, I marked green. So what I'd do then would be go through the whole shoot and pretty much I'd delete, you'll notice how there's nothing that doesn't have a color because it got deleted. So anything that I didn't like and the model didn't like, I pretty much deleted. There was no way that I was gonna be able to use it so it's gonna get flicked. The problem with, with doing this, I could just use one number. So one, two, three, four, five, right up to nine gave me nine different colors. And then what I would do from there would come in and then star rate them and you'll see the stars come up there. But the problem with star rating, I had to hit control one, control two, control three, control four, control five, and it made me fingers like spidery and I'd get cramps and all stupid things that old people get. 
One extra step. So I've decided I'm going to do most of my grading with the colors because I can just hit a single number. So now what I do is the model starts number seven, I start number six, and as I go through them, I will look at all the number seven marked files, uh, all the number six marked files, and then in all number sevens as well. I look through them, and anything I thought was good wouldn't mark it with a number five. Then I'd look at all the number fives, and number five would be one, two, three, four, five. So number five would be pink. And then I'd look only look at all the pink ones, so I could come up to here and go color rating, and you'll see that green is the first, so the green's the top rating. If I come down, you'll see how it's rated the colors with different uh, things with different colors. So how I wanted to do it is now when I go to color rating, it came up in the order of the most preferred pictures. I'm now swapping it round, so it'll end up with green as my favorite, and I shouldn't need to start. By the time I've done those seven steps of grading, I should now have my favorite pictures. This one being halfway between, um, and by the way, I didn't even mention this, the program I'm using is a program called Photo Mechanic. It is amazing for, I can't, I, is this, yeah, I can't do my Hasselblad on this, but I can do, I think all other cameras you can do on this. It is not a raw convert, it's just something I can quickly go through, delete, rename, save off fast previews, thumbnails to clients, uh, arrange things, sort things. Uh, it just makes it really quick for me to work. And what you'll see is if I open something up to full speed, as fast as I can flick, this will scroll through. Look how quick that scrolls. So it is extremely quick to go through your photos. So you can get through your photos very quick. And especially if you shoot motor drive on the Sony, which I do a little bit now, it allows me to quickly just say, click, click, oh, there's the shot, and delete the other ones that were the frame before and the frame after. Are you going to say something? I was just going to say, I forgot to add before that if anyone has any questions, just feel free to ask, ask. them and then I'll ask Peter. Oh, someone's from Germany. Yes. That's right, I thought it would do your job. Um, anyway, everything that you see at the top that's got five stars, I've already retouched from this shoot and I've supplied the model or I've posted or whatever. So I just wanted to pick a, a picture I haven't done. I was, I haven't had much time today because we're in lockdown and we're so busy. <laughs> um, I was having a look today at some of the ones. You'll notice if we come down a bit, there's no marks when I come down a bit. So when I come down to there, there are no marks. So they just end up in order of how they were shot. And there's a quite a bit of an area there that I haven't, there's some greens in there, which means there's some of my favorites, but there's no stars. So I'm going to go back to color class green and I'm going to go down to that part of the shoot, which my mic's off again. It's your mic off. What the off? Let me check. Have you got batteries? Yeah. That's on, that's on. Why would you do that to us? I'm just so I hid the little box down here. Um, it's, gone it's gone quiet. You did this last time, didn't you? Sound quiet. sound source. We're on audio six. Do you want to talk? Yeah. Hello. Talking. No, you're not really there. Um, just I'm just quickly just check something. Sound preferences. Sorry, guys. Uh, what do we want output? Internal speaker, that's where it's supposed to go, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know why it does this. It did this. I, we did it last time on this machine, didn't it? But it was working before, wasn't it? It was. You haven't hit mute or anything. You're not muted. You only uh, got two bars. Um... Do you want to talk? Okay. Um, it was working before though. That's you. Oh. That's not me. Okay. Yeah, see so if I talk, I get both come up. You talk now. According to this, you're there. According to that, you're there. You just have a listen on there. I'll keep talking. Sorry about this. It's just life. It's crap. We hate it. Beck would wish we never did it because 
when we record stuff, we just record it and everything works. But when we go live, oh, sometimes if the signal goes loud, down, it unsyncs and does stupid things. Have you noticed? Uh, maybe with the internet? Yeah, but okay. have you noticed, have you talked and seen if you're still coming up or not coming up? I can't really hear myself now. You can't hear yourself now. So, then what we have to do. <laughs> You just keep going with your thing. Sorry, right, everyone. If you want to talk, you just... Yeah, was... Don't lean into me. I'll hand you the mic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit creepy. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that was a complete waste of five minutes. Um, so I'm looking for the part. All right. So I haven't retouched anything from this section. Uh, because I've gone to color cast, you'll see there's no stars on any of that stuff in that top section. So you're going to see me decide now, and I'm going to do this fairly quick. And I might go through twice, and I'm going to star something that pops out. See, to me, there's something in her eye then. It's really weird. When I'm looking through these pictures, I nearly say the thought that I think she's thinking when she's looking at me. So I want something that has a dual thought like, oh, I like you, oh, you're a sleaze, or some, something a yin and yang. And quite often a really good ex eye expression is something that you can see two different things in the eyes. Oops, I yeah, quite like that one. Quite like that one. Are you going to help back, or are you just going to sit there quiet? I was reading a question. Oh, you're all right. You're reading a question. I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. They can't hear me anyway, so. Can Peter? Can you tell something about fashion plus art shootings? when the things combine in one picture? Is it unnatural in human synthetic picture or just not your style? I'm not understanding your question. Um, fashion, I... fashion plus art, like combining fashion and art. Is it like, is it bad or like, is that not your style? Like, or do you like- No, I love that, it's my favorite. Yeah. That's, yeah, by far, that's my favorite. That's called editorial. That's called, um, Hot couture, that's the stuff I love. That's the stuff that's missing in the world at the moment because all our magazines have gone from shooting editorial to shooting advertorial. Just hang on, I'll get back onto this subject because I'm just explaining what I'm doing. So I've rated, you'll see the little one stars. So now if I tell my system now to show me in star rating, I'm gonna come down to the green one stars and now just look at those pictures only. So you'll see there's my one stars and I've zip narrowed it down to about seven pictures. So while I narrow down again, I'll talk more about that. Um, if you look at, it's hard to find good fashion editorial at the moment anywhere, but there's still Numero magazine. Um, I really like what they do. Uh, ID can be pretty good, W can be good, uh, VS can be good. I haven't, this is how bad things are. I used to buy religiously. I would get to the news agency in the city once a month and get the latest Italian Vogue. I haven't done that like in two or three years. That's how little some of the magazines I used to really enjoy getting inspiration. Well, it's inspiration, but it's more excited. It's not to copy the work, it's more, uh, I get really excited to see the latest shoots by you know, some of my favorite photographers and what they're doing in those magazines. And I haven't done that for like two or three years now. That's how bad the industry's got. But to answer your question, yeah, there's, the, my favorite is what I call a uh, haute couture or fashion um, that has editorial fashion, it has a story. It's not about the clothes it's about the mood that person gets by wearing those clothes. And the main difference is back in the old days, you could turn the dress inside out, throw the model into a car, cover her in blood and ram it into a tree and create a great editorial shoot. 
But now, oh, you can't do that. We need to see that front pocket detail. So every photo has to show that detail. So you've lost the whole story. And that was what I loved about um, shooting editorial. We had, this is getting hard. She's uh, get rid of that. I'm getting it down. So yeah, to to a long answer, a long answer to a short question. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. The only problem is finding people to pay you for it. But you don't need to do that anymore. We've got the internet. Forget magazines. Um, you look at most of the the new entertainment. No, watch it now. I quite often will just put on a YouTube or go on to Twitch and. Uh, watch DJs and watch musicians that aren't even signed and find some of the best stuff out. And that interests me. They're making money off those due to monetization and things like that. So to me, you do that with yourself and get a blog up or start doing something where people can do it. And you just put a little note on your blog that, hey, I'm a really poor person. I'd really appreciate a $1 donation if you like a picture I post. And you'll find there'll be a percentage in the world that would actually give you that dollar. And I know it sounds silly, but I heard a Tim talk, and I can't remember that TED talk, Tim. (laughs) No, it's Ted's brother, Tim. I heard a Tim talk. (laughs) It's like Tim Tam. Uh, A Tim talk with some, I keep saying it too. Um, I can't remember the band, but she basically, their, their band got signed and they put out a record and Sony or whatever company said to them, hey, yeah, um, we sold, you sold, oh, something like you, you sold 400,000 copies and you made a million dollars profit. You're not really worth it to us. Uh, we want you to change your sound. And they said, stuff you. They went out and they did an independent album and they released it free and they just said, if you like it, give, it a, give us a donation. And they made like five times the amount of money. So just because people go, I'm not going to just give you $20 for this. I love this album. And because I know it's going 100% to you, I only give you $100 for that album. So that's, and yeah, that was average. I'm not going to pay you a cent. But they don't care. They let you give whatever you felt like you felt it was worth. And I think I like that way. So yeah, don't worry about magazines anymore. There's... I don't know what they're going to do in the future, but they're just boring. Anyway. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. Um, where did I get to? So I've got my three stars. I should. So I've got three pictures on three star. One, two. At this stage, I normally get Beck involved. I've normally made my mind up, but I normally say, hey, Beck, which one do you think? And I've already made my mind up. I'm just going to see which one do you reckon? Um, I think... That one. Copycat. <laughs> it's really weird. When we first started, when I first started shooting with Beck, we'd have complete different tastes of pictures that Beck and I liked of her. Now we'd nearly pick the exact same picture. And now it comes with the rest. She, she's rub, I've rubbed off on her too much and now she, um, she's become a mini me. All right, so I marked that five star. So that should now pop up bang. And I'm just going to drag that straight while I'm in Photo Mechanic. If I just drag it down and drop it over Photoshop, it'll open it in ACR for me. Questions? Uh, Who are your favourite photographers? Who are your favourite photographers? I can probably answer this one, but I'll let you do it. No, you can. Off you go. Helmut Newton, Peter Lindbergh, um, Patrick DiMichelia, Avedon. Oh, this I need to type. Uh, Pen. No, they can't because it will have the little dots. Will it? Yeah. But don't they see it as I type? I can flick off that. I think that got. I think we're now back on just us. I hope so. I hope I didn't just ruin it. Is it back on to just us? No. Oh, yeah, you just took it off. There. Yeah, I know it was because you've. Oh no, you haven't put the password in. No, I'm about oh, to. Sorry, my bad, guys. <laughs> Oh, it's just done just us now. It should be at least. <laughs> they say they can't see it anyway. No, because I hadn't typed. Yeah, but it's little dots. All right, now no. we'll go that way. I thought it pops the letter <laughs> up before it turned into a dot. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, it does I think actually. It does. You're just trying to give my whole thing. Oh, what's it I need to do? Sign out from. Where am I? Sign out from MacBook Pro. Is that you? Yeah. 
Oh, so you stealing my account? Well, I have to. You have to. Yeah, you can have this back. I can have this back. Um, yeah, pretty much. Look, there's lots of photographers I really, really like, but um, Helmut Newton. I love the stories. Love his black and white. Love his stories. Uh, really like his stories. Uh, Peter Lindbergh, I love the expressions. I love his lighting. I love his filmic type photography. Um, Patrick G De Michella is just a photographer I really like. Avedon's another one I really like. But then there's lots of photographers I like, like Ellen Von Unworth. I find her amazing, but I find she has a look and everything's just that look and you can just go, yeah, it's an Ellen Von Unworth, it's nothing new. I still like the pictures, but with the others, I'd always, there'd be something special I wanted to jump on. Um, anyway, so this has opened this up in RAW. There we go, I don't know what that, oh, there it is. It's horrible. People have asked me what I think about the new uh, Photoshop and that. It just, it just annoys me when they move things and I've got to find them again. That's, I don't find much difference anywhere else. Um, it's quite a nice colour picture and all these people that have a go at Sony's colour, her skin tones look beautiful to me so I don't have a problem with Sony colour. Um, Did you do any colour? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't, it'd just be like everybody else. Yeah, that was really rude. One of the things I start off by doing, or the very first thing I start off by doing is go down to this thing called detail, a really important area, and there's a thing called sharpening, and you just turn that thing off. <laughs> we do not need to sharpen. Our lenses are so friggin' sharp these days. Um, so turn, that's the very first thing I do. I wish I could default this. There most likely is a way, but I don't know. So I don't have to do that every time. The next thing I do, I already can see my histogram. I can see I never trust the clipping in here. It's just wrong. Once you clip, it's normally way too far. So I look at the histogram more than I look at any clipping happening. And I want to try and have as much, sorry, as much detail as possible in this picture to take into Photoshop so I can break it, but then be able to recover areas that I broke because it's there in the picture I imported. So basically I want to actually lift my blacks up a little bit and compress my highlights down a little bit so I have plenty of headroom each side. But what I just do, I normally just hit auto and see what Adobe's going to do to my picture. And then I will say, did I like that worse, uh, better or worse? But I actually don't like it at all. So if I take that off, I'm going to do it myself. Um, my exposure... I'm just bringing the exposure up a bit, like it's 0.2. Just again, I want to get a little bit more headroom in my blacks. Contrast, I'm not going to touch. Highlights, I need to bring down. So you'll see if you watch the histogram up here, I'm bringing, just giving yourself a little bit more room from the highlights at the tops. Shadows, I want to fill in those shadows. So you'll see how this is opening up, giving me that detail. It's flattening out the image, but it means I'm getting all the detail I want. Uh, the white area, I don't think with this picture I need to do anything. So as is, and blacks, I don't want to crush my blacks. So I'm going to leave my blacks where they are. Textures, vibrance, all that other stuff, not going to touch. Now, I used to now take this into Photoshop like this and do my black and white convert. But now I've found that I can get quite a nice black and white in here. So I see what happens by using this program to do my black and white first. So all I did was hit black and white. And if we go down to black and white mixer, it's dead flat. I'm going to do an auto just to see what Adobe thinks it should look like. And cool. It's brought a little bit of a blue-green channel feel to it. And... If I go before and after, I will decide what one I like better and then I will start adjusting myself. What each of these sliders means, if she had magenta eyeliner, if I brought this positive, the magenta is going to go lighter. If I take it negative, the magenta is going to go darker. Um, I know just looking at the picture, there's going to be no magenta really in this picture. So anything that that slider is not going to affect, I just bring back to zero. So purple there's no purple in this um blues 
she had brown eyes, so there won't be any blues in this. Aquas, there's no aquas in this. So you can see all those bottom channels really are having no effect. I've really only got these three, which are basically working with highlights in the hair and skin tones. So the yellows will quite often bring the highlights. See how those highlights are picking up a little bit more. So I'm going to bring the yellows. In fact, I'm just going to bring the yellows back to center. So I actually like that contrast that that gives. The orange is going to give me the darkness in the skin and bring me the detail of the shadows. And every, every little bump and shadow that's being caused is being done by that orange. See how that orange slider is affecting. We can make a look on Palumpri. Um, but I'm just, I want to keep, so some of that's beautiful face structure that I don't want to lose. So I don't want to go too dark, but I want to keep it. Then the reds is more going to be if she's got pimply face or red lipstick. It's going to make, the, see how white the lips can go? And you can see it's sort of blotching out. She's had a little bit of rosacea in the cheeks. So the reds, I think the reds can just pretty much sit at zero. Um, the, looking back at now, the orange seems too strong. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. So it's amazing. Out of all of that, I've used a bit of orange, um, minus a bit of orange. Everything else is sitting at zero. I will come back, turn my black and white on and off again because it re... Oops, don't. What did I do? Get off there. It just reminds me of what it was looking like. I'm going to come now and just play with these figures a little bit more. Uh, my shadows are still sitting fine. My highlights... I'm going to bring my highlights even lower. Uh, my blacks... And my whites, take my whites down a little bit and bring my blacks up a little bit. And that's pretty much my raw work done when I'm using ACR. We get lots and lots of people asking me about Capture One. I can't do what I just did then, what I've done this quick and easy in Capture One because they're Shadows, whites, blacks, and highlights don't work, seem to work the same way, and I cannot work how to get that beautiful flattening of the corona, flattening of the curve, <laughs> flattening of my histogram, because I want to basically decontrast in a way so I can then selectively add my contrasting in Photoshop later, but then bring in detail whereby contrasting it too much, I might lose some detail, I can bring it back in. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to double check what my export settings are. So I'm 16 bit, 300 DPI. It's not going to, because I'm going to go straight into Photoshop, it's not going to be a PSD or a TIFF or anything. It's just going to open this file now in Photoshop. So if I just go open, I think, yes. You got a question? I got lots of questions. Oh, Thanks. Um, first of all, I just wanted to You've been told that, yes, you can save your settings, like with the sharpening. Um, oh. So it's, oh, you've closed you it. Can. Now there was a three little dots, so I'm pretty sure after you oh, turn you off sharpening. Preset. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do that. Oh, I'll do that. We'll have sure. a play with that. Um, also, how would you mix ambient light with flash in an outdoor shoot with a backdrop on either a cloudy or a sunny day? Like what, all the time. We said, how would you? Like what type of modifiers, stops of underexposure before flash, etc. Um, I normally, if I'm doing ambient light and flash, what I'm normally, it's two ways I'm looking. I either set, this is hard because I've got my own way of working. It mightn't be the best way to everybody else. A lot of times I will set my exposure to get the ambient light to give me the shadow fill that I want and then bring the flash in to add the highlights to what I want. Um, but quite often in the studio, if I'm shooting flash and I feel, oh, I'd just like it to be a little bit less contrasty and maybe uh, my shadows be protected a bit, sometimes I will bring my shutter speed down because my flash is a high quality and will freeze. And I might bring my, my um my shutter speeds down to a 30th of a second because my flash is still going to freeze the model and then I'm using the ambient light to fill. The only problem with that is if you are doing color work, some you know, you've got to watch your color, 
your cross color temperatures for different lights. I actually quite like that look of cross color temperatures because it feels cinematography and a lot of cinematography is done with that. Um, you know, you look at te teal orange is cross color. Yep. No, I haven't got anything else. Can... Oh, that was it. Yeah. Oh, one question in there. Oh, well done. Yeah. I'm stirring it. People wish to know what you've been told. All right. So I'm going to build this. I'm not going to run any of my actions. I'm just going to build it, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining. I'm just going to quickly build each of my things I'm going to do step by step. More detailed stuff and actions are on file. Yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, you've got to pay if you want really detailed stuff. We haven't got time. All right, so the very first thing is I look, does it need liquefying? This picture needs, well, there is there is something I want to liquefy. She most likely doesn't care. I'm going to look at this as if this was one of my clients. And there's one thing I know that a couple of my clients would pick on. Do you know what that is? Nose. Yeah, thank you. She just has a bump in her nose. That's all it is. So by me just putting a rectangle just so I can just zoom in on to, come on. Don't tell me that's not going to work. Oh, now it does. Um, I'm just going to come in and I'm only going to move it the tiniest little bit. That's it. That's all I want to do. Just at that peak was just a, I could have done it with a little bit of dodging and burning. There's just so much quicker for me to do it with this. And hit OK. You'll notice that I didn't even set a new layer because I, um, I do this so carefully, I never have to fix. So I never take something too far that I have to go back and fix it. So that's the first thing. Next thing, I'm just going to put a new layer and I'll just drop a new layer in there and I'll just call it heel. And this is where I do my healing and my uh, clone tool. And I don't do much. So the first thing I'm looking at is around the background of the picture. You can see dust spots, not. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to now just Mm, shortcuts aren't working. Uh, that command doesn't work, remember? You have to use that command. Right. Oh. No, that's not working. Oh, there we go. You broke my command. Um, so all I'm doing is looking around to where things I need to heal. So you can see that little bit of her black top still showing. So I should be on heal tool. I'm just going to go on that line and then you'll see if I move off, you can see there's a line attached to my tool. Line that up with her arm and clean that out. And I'm just gonna work my way through the picture. I still want her to be real. Now, those neck creases, yeah, they bother me. I really should clean them out. I was gonna skip it, but no, they bother me. They're annoying because it's a me thing. This is a hang up I have. If I get too many neck creases, I get upset by them. So. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time. So they always end up messy, but we'll just see how neat. I will do a little bit of dodging and burning to neat finish them off. And the good thing is because this was shot at a shallower depth of field, um, I'm not going to see out of focus rings from my heel tool because I'm working on an area that is out of focus. So I don't have to worry about seeing a problem that heel tool can create because my area that I'm healing is already out of focus. So the edges of the heel tool, which might go out of focus, is only going out of focus on an out of focus area, if that makes any sort of sense. Um, not sure if I'm liking the latest heel tool. Uh, I have to play around with it a little bit more. But I'm gonna clean up some of this stuff with dodging and burning because it is leaving a little bit of shadow artifacts because of the way the latest heel tool is working. Ah, oh, yeah, that'll annoy me. Were you going to ask a question? No, oh. don't have any. Don't have any? No. So everybody's mesmerized by my beauty. Yes. Cool, so that's all I want to do there. Uh, just for the model, not for me, that tiny little crease, which is the start of a cranky line. So this is what she's going to look like in another 10 years. She's going to have bigger creases. <laughs> oh, it's like your uh, double chin. Oh, I don't say that. <laughs> well, you know, so does your mum have that chin? And I bet you her mum has that crease. 
Uh, sorry. So I have my dead stomach. There's a question. There's a question. Yes. Um, there's, I'm just, before you ask the question, I'm just going to, oh, it's working on now. Maybe it's a UCIP. Um, I just want to move this one hair. It's only because it is a one hair and it's giving me annoyance. I'm just going to take that out of shot. Now, what you will see, see this beautiful graininess up in the shadows? I love that. It's just like film. It's the stuff I to die for. You'll see that this is not razor sharp, but it is razor sharp. So that, but it feels natural. I can put my hand to the screen and it feels about the same sharpness as my hand. So that's what I want. Off you go. Oh. Annoyance. Annoyance. I know. I'm very sorry, my microphone died, guys. Uh, have you tried using the heel tool with different blending mode? Apparently it works better on the new version. What blending mode? I haven't, no. So to answer your question, no, I haven't, but please tell me what blending mode. I don't use Heal Tool very often, very much. I use it, I mainly only use it for very fine, dark and light areas. Um, if it's anything sort of in the mids and it's fairly wide, I you'll see how I dodge and burn those out. But just, it's more things like hairs or tiny little black or white dots. These are all these dots, little fine ones, or remove, but the bigger dots, I can, I've got my own way of dealing with them. And I still want to keep this really, really natural. So I'm not going to pull too much out. I just want to quickly, I'm just going to go one minus minus. I just want to fix one thing up now. I'm going to jump onto the background layer. If I grab my, uh, my marquee tool, and I'm just going to, only because I know that I'm not going to like this at the end, so I might as well get rid of it now. I've just marqueed that out. I'm going to go Shift Delete. I'm going to go OK, okay. and this is con going to content aware that area, and that'll get rid of that little. I'll hit to, 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 to select. You'll see that just cleaned up that little thing on the edge really quick and easy. If you do it over a bigger area, you're going to bring in weird artifacts. But little areas like little corners, it's one of the best ways to clean up your base image. Off you go. Um, ben, would personally love to see your curves like work, like how you do the curves. But just you, about you, the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the blending mode at the top, um, for the dark dots, you could select lighting in that blending mode and vice versa. Oh, yeah, that's all, yeah. yeah. Oh, and there's last, another question, sorry, as well. Uh, why, why are you erasing the folds of skin when that's just what happens in reality and not reduce them? Uh, for this picture, it was though, on the neck, only because reducing them, it still annoys me. It's a me thing. It's neck, back scene, neck creases, it annoys me for some reason, I think. It must have been a hangman or something in my previous life or something stupid. But it's just something that bugs me. Like some people comment on my pictures that the hands or my crop bugs them. Everyone's got their own little bug there. And I just, when I looked at the picture, I just kept seeing those lines. So you'll see once I dodge and burn it, it'll come up beautiful. And I know it is a natural thing. And if I it was doing natural work, I would never take it out. And I do do, I'd say 15, 20% of my work is unretouched. And, and that stuff wouldn't be, but this is also going to be used for the model's folio that she'll give to her agency. And I know her agency would prefer them not to be there. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly drop in two curve layers. Um, so all I've done, instead of coming down here and bringing all this up, I have the adjustments sitting up here. So I'm just going to click and give two curve layers. Bottom curve layer I'm going to call dodge. And the one above I'm going to call burn. Um, this is my skin retouching, dodging and burning, which is different to darkroom dodging and burning. So I'll just like that. So on the dodge, I'm just going to bring my curve up in the middle about one third of that square, only very small. The more you bring it up, the less this works properly. And I'm just going to hit Command I on the mask to turn. I didn't do it. Oh, that's right. You said the you broke my command button. 
And on the burn, I'm going to do exactly the opposite, pull it down a little bit. And on the mass, command I to invert it. So now I've got a dodge and burn layer, but the masks are black, so you can't see them. So this is my skin cleanup technique. And this is based off a technique I learned 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago, which some of the top retouchers in Vogue and that were using at the time, I think they still use it. I do not use frequency separation, it just doesn't print. With this, I can print this picture two, three meters high, you can walk up, you will not see any photoshopping from what I've just done. So while I'm on the burn layer, I'm going to get my brush tool. Hopefully that went to brush tool. I'm going to make sure that my brush tool opacity is 100%. My flow is 1%. Now I retouch on average 20 hours, maybe 30 hours a week, and I do not use 2%. So if I'm not prepared to do 2%, you shouldn't. So 1%, I know that means 100 brush strokes to go 100%. Bad luck. It's the only way you'll get it flawless, so you cannot see Photoshopping. So I'm on a white brush on the dodge layer, which means wherever I paint is going to bring in that slight mid-curve up. So see that slight? Wherever I paint, it's just going to make the mids lighter. It's not going to make white lighter, and it's not going to make black lighter, because they haven't changed. It's only the mids. And um, I normally start out on the skin, on, oh, sorry, on the body because there's more skin. And if you start on the face, you'll get lazy. You won't do the body properly. Your picture will then look retouched because you'll have a different level of detail between the body and the face. A little bit like most women's makeup when they've got beautifully made up faces and then that stops at their chin area and they go nowhere from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just looking for anywhere that's dark and painting it till that dark thing disappears. Um, some of this stuff can take a while, especially if we're doing stuff for high-end commercial, but I find this really, really relaxing. So I don't mind doing this at all. At first, if it's a big image with a lot of blotching, I go, oh my God, this is gonna take hours. Next minute, it's finished. So it does take a little bit of time, but I'm not gonna be super fussy on this, I'm just going to work the areas that my eye is catching. So that little, I'll just do a little bit more, this little bit of time that I just spent, if I turn that on and off, see the difference? And there is no sign of retouching. It's not leaving any telltale signs that I've been there. Uh, I'm just looking at things that bug me. See this little white sort of crease line? So if I go up to my burn and come in there and just fade that back in to all of a sudden it just disappears and they're tiny little things and again if I turn it on and off it's a little thing but that just cleaned up and it doesn't leave any sign that I've been there she has she had really good skin so all of that's fine all right the mess I made of her neck now I can clean this up just by using the dodge and burn tools if you got questions no, no? that's right um, so I'm just again working Anywhere that looks a little bit too bright from what I like, I'm putting one, two, three brush strokes on. I'm not putting many brush strokes at all because it doesn't need much in the mids. Um, you most likely can't even see my little circle, but I'm working on her neck. Once I've finished this little bit of neck area, I'll turn it on and off and you'll see how big a difference like two minutes made on my sloppy heel tool work. But the only reason I sloppy heel tool that is because I know that my dodging burning is gonna hide a lot of that stuff. So there's a couple little areas I want to pick up on. Now we're mostly gonna do, for the next six weeks, we're gonna do at least one live retouch a week because we are locked down. We are very restricted in what we can do in Victoria now. We are curfewed, like if Beck isn't out of here by a set time, she's gonna get locked up. Well, there's a new conspiracy about that as well. Is it? Yeah. 
Come on. Talk. You can't do that. Everybody's waiting. Anyway. You talk about this new conspiracy, Claire. So the... Um, it's the... We've all got to be locked down, but then apparently there's all these planes that are coming into Melbourne and, and they're all coming in like in the middle of the night. So... What, what, are they, they, what are they bringing in? I don't know. That's the conspiracy. What's going on? Why are they making all these planes come in while we're locked inside at curfew? I know what it oh, is. They're bringing in all the Mexicans that are trying to cross the border into America. Oh, my God. No? No. Oh. Has it got anything to do with that children's blood conspiracy uh, thing you were telling me about? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Conspiracy theory. I'll, I need to look into it more. I was just... Coco so my friend sent me a post about it laughing. But we hear the planes at night time here. Well, I haven't heard a plane. Mm-hmm. Although I normally do go for that. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Or yeah, does your dodge and burn technique work with colour also? It does, but if you go really, really heavy with it, you will start to... Oh, I did a big mistake. Sorry, everybody. I made a massive mistake. For black and white, this will make no difference at all. If I was doing this for colour... And I can't show you because this picture is black and white. What I will do, anything I'm using curves in Photoshop on a color picture, I will not leave my blending mode to normal. I move my blending mode to a luminosity and that will help stop color shifting through dodging and burning. But because a lot of my work is done in black and white, I'm not gonna see any of those problems. But yes, if you heavily dodge and burn in color, when you um, burn something, you're going to oversaturate it. And when you dodge something, you're going to desaturate it and gray the area. So you've got to be a little bit careful. When I, I have a couple of tricks I do when I have to do the color work. I prefer, it's really hard. I don't like having to dodge and burn color work too much. But when I do, I have tricks where I dodge and burn with color. So I have my color palette set to a color in the family that I'm dodging and burning lighter than. So if I'm dodging and burning skin, I'll find a, a light yellowy, uh, yellowy orange color or to make it lighter, just so I, I'm not actually burning in the wrong color into there. It's hard to explain. But a lot of the times, I don't get booked a lot for high-end retouching of color, my color work. A lot of my color work is straight out of camera or very close to as it was shot. So what I've done now, I'm, if I look at that, the, I'm happy with everything, the neck, in fact, I should show you the neck. So if I turn that on and off, see the big difference that made? And it wasn't that much time. I could most likely go in a little bit more and just that bit of dark area, and I might do that. Um, you're gonna ask a question while I do this, or? Uh. Uh. Yeah. I hope this is not too. Uh, apparently, they're bringing in all the A7S3 parts for the illegals to put together. That's what they're bringing. <laughs> cool. Does that mean? <laughs> does that mean I can get an A7S before anybody else in the world? Oh my God. That camera looks amazing as a still camera, 12 megapixel. I'm really looking forward to seeing how good those 12 megapixels work for low light and for color and contrast, 15 stop dynamic range. You're now sort of talking medium format type stuff. So, yeah. Uh, and are we live now? Yes, we are live now. Oh, yeah. That's Great. a live, that was a really bad joke. Here we go. Here you go. So yeah, I just finished that neck off a little bit better from where I was. You'll see, look at the big difference. And if I zoom in 100%, you're not gonna see any change in there. See how you can't see the Photoshop change? And that's why I use this technique. She has really good skin, but I still, you know, she still wants it brought to that sort of slightly finished level. I don't have to do a lot. I'm just gonna do stuff that's gonna make, <laughs> make her happier, if that makes sense. Um, because this picture wasn't a commercial shoot, this is for her folio. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure that she likes it and, oops, get off there. So now what I'm doing now is I'm, I just let my eyes uh, just zigzag all over the picture while I'm working 
And as soon as what I'm working on seems to disappear, I just move to the next thing my eyes see. And it does, I can move zigzag all over the face. It's basically the next thing that catches my eye is to where I go. Um, yeah, I don't have a rule of thumb. Mainly the reason why is if I'm working with a client and we'll give them a cost for the shoot, we give them the usage, the cost for usage of the image, and we also give them a cost for the retouching and hourly rate. If the client says, "Yeah, look, I'm happy to put pay, you know, one hour or whatever it is for the retouch," I can't get three quarters of the way through the face and go, "Oh, that's their hour up. That's it. No more." So by zigzagging around and doing the whatever's standing out the worst, it means I can stop at any time, and it's consistent level of retouching over the whole face. This won't need a lot at all. Um, sometimes this gets a little bit, um, what is it, you can't stop. Once you get to a certain point, it's like, I can't stop this. I just need to keep going. So I see that dot, I see that dot. I'm most likely at the point where I could nearly zoom out a bit and look at globally how it's looking rather than this finer stuff. I do want to clean up this forehead a little bit. So you'll see there's a couple like wine pimples or little bumps on the head. If I just burn off the highlights, You can complete, especially in black and white, even in color, I can pretty much remove, unless it's a super scabby pimple, uh, I can pretty much remove pimples just with dodging and burning. So I'd get rid of the highlight, which means that light area first, then I come in and fill in the shadow of it. And you'll note, once I finish this little area, you'll notice it's just, they just disappear. I'm just gonna get this a little bit down here. And now I'm just going to take the highlights off each of those. Oops, no, I'm not. I'm putting it in, you idiot. Go to that one. Just take the highlights off each of those areas. And this will just, you'll notice when I turn this on and off in a minute, you'll notice that a lot of what look like raised bumps and could be pimples or things like that will now start to look like just skin freckles and blemishes. A couple a little. And a lot, you can't, I know my curse is going to be really small. Um, a lot of the areas are most likely only getting two, three brush strokes on them. That's why I work at uh, two, uh, one percent flow is because a lot of the time one or two brush strokes is all it needs to fix. So it's most likely enough on there. If I turn off dodge and burn now, see the difference that just came up in there? See that just cleaned off all those bumps and that that's just sitting in that area. Is there questions? Mm -hmm. Paul said to try the mixer brush for color images in the new version of Photoshop. The mixer brush. Mm. I'll have to look that up. Because I'm so busy, I just taught myself the way and haven't looked at any tutorials and what. So I'll have to have a look at that mixer brush. But again, when was the last time you, unless it's bad. <laughs> when was the last time you saw me retouch color? In the last the, live stream, you did a color one. No? Yeah. Yeah, but that was just the live stream, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think you posted it. Yeah, oh, no, I you know. turned it to black and white and then you posted <laughs> it. <laughs> it's better in black and white. Uh, uh, yeah, you... but if you think about it, even with my commercial work, a lot of them only want very minimal retouching anyway. Yeah. So when was the last time you saw me, except for that magazine one we just did? Mm. For Rosanna, that magazine yeah. shoot. Half of that was in colour, and that was a fair bit of retouching for that yeah 
And also he said, do we see any change or chance of getting to Europe this year? Are we going to skip the European tour? Right, right at the very moment, Australia's borders are closed, which means there's very, very few flights except for the flights that are bringing Sony's into Australia. <laughs> um, and that's from Melbourne. Um, we, both Beck and I are desperate. We're, we're going crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, so a lot of our work is overseas. So um, we, if we can get over, we will be. So we're going to make a decision in a month's time if we're going to get to Europe or not this year. I don't think we'll get to America this year because I think America's still got massive problems. Um, but Europe, you know, places like Italy's already back to normal. All our models are out partying every weekend. We keep seeing their feeds. So, yeah, it's something we really want to do, but unfortunately it might have to be next year now, which we'd hate mm. to um, another question. Yeah. Uh, saying that we are uh, RL Brooks is saying he's a big fan of us too thank you very much and the hopes that we are well just wondering he's a big fan of film photography how come you don't shoot on um, shoot in black and white film I do but it's just so time consuming mm. um, we at Beck's seen it in fact I've got a blog up if you go to my blog page there's links I think from the blog page if not go to any of my web pages it's not for the blog no Sorry? There's not a link for the blog, right. but... Go to any of my web pages, and you'll see there is a link on any of them for blog. If you go into blog, you'll see that there's a shoot I did with Anne Duffy, uh, which is straight out of camera. Um, not, not retouched at all. It's just straight scanned images that I shoot. The problem is, is I spent... I had about 16 rolls of film or something that I'd shot... And it took me pretty much an entire day of scanning to get them all scanned in and saved up. I just don't have that time in my mm. life. It's as much as I love it, I don't have that time. And I find, especially with my Hasselblad, I can get so close to the film look that I used to shoot, um, especially with Hasselblad because I've got their beautiful V1 set of clarity and shadow fills in that um it just allows me to get to my image much quicker uh, it's just one of those things if i'd re if i was retired yeah i'd most likely shoot a hell of a lot more film but people have got to realize that i'm running a business and i pretty much work seven days a week i just do not have that time to spend on the processing side of things. Would you mind sharing a photo retouch and color grading tutorial? Didn't I think that last the last live retouch on here you did a bit of color grading um, in it? Did I, have I done one on inspire yet? Um, on color grading. Most likely not. I don't yeah, think on color grading, but I there's plenty like, of retouches. I'll, I'll do. I can do a color grade because uh, I'm still playing with with it a bit um i haven't got to a point where i have one technique that's working flawless for me but i have worked out some ways of doing what i want to do and i am love love working with lutz and especially with the final cut pro now um I can now export, make LUTs in Final Cut Pro, export them out, then use them in Photoshop. Uh, yeah, it's something I will do it, but at the moment, I always find it a bit hard when I haven't developed my own style to a point that I'm super happy with it to start sharing it with other people because uh, I mightn't be doing it the right way or I don't know. And, Till I get super happy with it, I actually don't want to say, hey, this is how I do it because I'm not super happy with it yet. I'm happy with working with LUTs with my video work. I'm happy that I can create a video or a still and then match it to a video. But when it comes, and there's a lot of LUTs are to do with color, even though some is black and white. Um, yeah, I just, 
I'm not 100% there yet. Although that the last video I put up of Shay, I did a color LUT for that to get me the contrasting into the areas I wanted it to be by using the color LUT to get my contrasting into the background without it happening on Shay. And then made a black and white LUT to then desaturate it. And that worked a treat. I really enjoyed that. But again, I didn't then take that into the stills. I just used my normal black and white way of working into the stills. Apparently the mixer brush needs to be used in combination with FS. Using it on a regular <coughs> layer will make the skin unnatural. Right. Well, that's why I would never use it because frequency separation, it makes a mess. And oh. I never use frequency separation. Um, all high-end professional photographers or retouchers don't use frequency separation for retouching skin. Mm. There is a thing which if you need to sharpen, you can get the most amazing sharpening using frequency separation where you can have a single radius of sharpening. I'll stick it up my nose so I don't... <laughs> my arm's getting sore. Oh. oh, you want to have a drink, that's why. Um, so yeah, frequency separation, <laughs> If what I'm saying is just get a picture, blow it up to its maximum size and print it, and then you'll never use frequency separation again. <laughs> so commercially, frequency separation is just, it's not viable. It, it doesn't work, and the high-end people don't use it for that type of retouching. We will slowly dodge and burn and clean pixel by pixel rather than just do a lasso and then have to worry about the edges of those lassos, what's going to happen. But yeah, but this, I am old school with this and still today, I showed, you saw that picture with the frequency separation, you just went, oh, yuck. Yeah. So even Beck, who's not a photographer, she's a model, even she found it not pleasant to look at. Mm. Cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that's pretty much what I call my skin retouching done. And if I just go before and after on the entire thing, you'll see it's a big change, but there's not, there's still the essence of the photo hasn't changed. And that's what I'm always after. So my next step is now, what would happen if I'd shot this in film? So now I'd be in a dark room doing dodging and burning. So my next step is to do that style of dodging and burning, which means I want to make these areas to be popping out a little bit more and these areas to drop back a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do, and this is the only way, well, it's the only way I can find to do it. If you go up to layer, new layer, and I'm just gonna call it cutting because I call it cutting. Now, don't look up cutting, nobody else calls it cutting, it's just a word I use so I know the difference between dodge and burn. What, once I've done this, I'm gonna set my blend mode to soft light then once I click soft light here you'll see it opened up a little box at the bottom fill soft light neutral color 50% gray I'm going to click that this is the only easy way to get this to happen so new layer set your blending mode to anything within this area except for pan light will bring up this 50% gray dialog box. So soft light's the one I like to use. I think it's the closest to true uh, dodging and burning. And then if you hit okay, you'll see I have a gray layer. If I turn off all those layers below, you'll see I have an exactly 100, uh, 128 red, green, blue, gray layer. So equal parts red, green, and blue at 128. And because of that blending mode, that's why you can't see it. Anything that's exactly halfway between black and white, which is 0 to 255, 128, does not do anything to the picture. But if I make this lighter or darker than, it will lighten or darken the picture. Are you going to ask a question? No, that's all right. I thought you were looking to ask a question. No, I'm just watching what you're just doing. Just watching. Learnings. Yeah. So now I'm still on my 1% flow and I'm going to use my white and black brushes. So I'm going to start off with this by just working her a little bit, just a touch. I don't want to do too much. I'm just going to set slightly smaller so I can see the bottom edge. And if I get onto my white brush, 
Oops, thank you. So while I'm on white brush, 1% flow, I want to just bring out that a bit. I'm just picking the highlights and I'm putting one or two strokes at 1% flow. Just the forehead, I want it rounder, uh, just into that eyebrow socket, just a touch. And literally, these are only one or two strokes. So there's the lightning I'm going to do. Maybe I'm going to bring up a little bit of, just a tiny bit of the shadows in the hair. So I'm just going over the shadows in the hair, and I'm going to highlight that shoulder and that little ridge line on the shoulder that little highlight on her back and that highlight down her spine. Then I'm going to just hit X, it'll swap it to my black brush at 1% flow. I'm just going to carefully, I just want to pull the edges down a tiny bit. Just that jawline, two strokes on the jawline. And that's it. And if I turn that on and off, you'll see there's just a little bit of filling of the shadows in the hair and just enhancing the punch of those highlights. I am going to throw another stroke of two strokes of dark down there. I just felt that was a little bit too light, one there. That's it. So now I've got this punching the way I want it to punch. I'm now going to do a couple of other things which I call toning the image, which is taking the image through to my look and my feel. So, so a lot of this toning I can do very quickly in uh, Hasselblad software. I don't even have to do any of this work in Photoshop because I can get this look in Hasselblad. You know, yeah, make no, noise. Sorry. sorry. Uh, apparently, frequency separation and in painting. Well, you should have a look at how frequency separation and in painting works in Affinity Photo. I don't this, use Infinity Photo. Oh, apparently, it doesn't create those artifacts oh, you were yeah. talking about. I don't use Infinity Photo because oh. it's not what I was trained to Ooh, use. Yeah, you, and if I'm going to if I'm going to learn how to use Infinity Photo when I know Photoshop inside and yeah. out, no, it's, yeah. Um, and with the Photoshop, it ties in with other stuff we do. Um, so with with this here. I'm now going to set up some layers so I can get my Hasselblad look. So with Hasselblad, I don't have to do this. I can actually do it in my RAW. But with the Sony, to get my same Hasselblad feel, I need to do this in Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to drop above my cutting layer is a gradient map layer. And I'm just going to hit D, make sure I'm going uh, black foreground, white background. Now it's gradient map layer, it's not gradient gradient. So if we come down to here, you'll see, oops, didn't want that, undo. If we come down to here, you'll see up the, see the gradient up here? It's not this one. It's gradient map right down here. And you want your gradient map set from black to white. So from 000, zero to 255, all three channels. Then if I hit that there, this is a really good way of turning an image black and white too. Look at that contrast it just threw on that image. Now, if you didn't change this, you're going to end up with something like this. That's fine, because there's presets for black and white. You can just come at any time and just click black and white, or you might end up with a negative, so you just hit the reverse and it'll come at. So if I had my layers around back to front, there is an area that says reverse it. But, right, so this is only put there. This is what I'm going to use to add some contrast, and it's lineal contrast. It is lineal from black to white. It's not a curve. It's a straight line making the more contrast very even across the picture. Now, I'm still turn that off. Uh, that's only there for as I start to tone up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding my curves. And I don't name these because I might end up with five curves. And they're just curves. And I'm then going to mask out where I don't want the curve hitting. And that will replicate what I can do in Hasselblad using the clarity slider and the shadow fill slider. In conjunction with each other, we'll do the same effect that this is going to do. So I normally just single one or two dot mark it. I'm just going to put a down curve, and what I'm doing now is looking at how I want my background. I'm going to have to put two dots in this curve because it's pulling this too far down. 
And this is the difference between the Hasselblad curve. I don't need to put two dots, I can do it with one dot. Right, so this is just for me to look at the background. I'm not looking at the model. I'm looking at that's where I want my background. And working with natural light, I can't just quickly and easily do this. In a dark room, I can do this because it's exactly the same thing. It's like I'm going to dodge and burn the background down by using curve layers. So make sure that I've got a black brush because I'm on a white layer and I'm going to pull off at 1% flow. I never do this anymore. Otherwise, you will see this work happening. And I'm going to bring maybe 100 brush strokes over her and I'm going to pop her back out and I'm going to work my halos at the same time. And because it's 1% flow, it won't look like you've created a halo. It's just gonna slowly pop up. And I am working some areas a little bit longer than other areas, so I'm using it as a dodge and burn as well. Come on, hurry up. Too many brush strokes. Any questions while well, I'm waiting for this to stop spinning? Just checking. Uh, can you check this live stream will be uploaded later? Yes, yes. it will be. It will be available after the stream ends. It will be and on the channel forever. We're also going to try and stop um, YouTube putting one ad up every three minutes. So yeah, we, we, we didn't even know that was happening. So what we've done is we've gone back in and pulled half their ads off. Yeah, sorry to so, anyone that went and watched back lives and there was ads every three minutes. It's that's must... not our doing, that's No, not... that's YouTube automatically did that and it was very frustrating. So I fixed all that up for you guys. Um, and Peter, you started off in normal mode, but now you're in luminosity. Which... No, no, no. Uh, so the luminosity is on that dodge and burn. If I was in doing this in colour, I would be in luminosity. When black and white, it doesn't matter. Okay. But if I'm doing it, um, if we have time at the end, I'll quickly show you the difference. Okay. If I can't do it on a black and white image, you won't see the difference. But I'll quickly go over that at the end, if I remember. So this is, is that it? Yeah. So as you, if you look at my mask, you'll notice that the, the mask is getting, uh, you'll start to see my paintbrush marks in there and sorry my dogs are going off in the background but I won't be able to hear them uh, but that's that's getting pretty close to my first of many layers and if I just turn this on and off see how she's really not changing much but you notice some people don't love that picture just as it is and then other people are going to like that popping picture and this is just going to be your taste and that's the whole joy of being uh, an artist or a photographer. It's your look. No, no, nothing's right or wrong. It's what you are trying to create. So I pretty much finished that. I'm going to drop another layer in. I don't know why it's going so slow. It might be this new Catalina. Could it be the new Photoshop? It could be new Photoshop. Should we, it could be the new... The new Apple thing. Have you heard the new Apple one? Karen. Sorry, dad joke. So I'm going to drop this and do it again. So again, I'm now looking a little bit at the backdrop, background, but I'm also looking at the foreground. So that background's looking nice. The foreground, I'm liking where the blacks are going into the foreground. So now I'm just going to work the highlights and a little bit of the shadows and I'm still on black brush at 1% flow and I wouldn't mind just getting my halo to work a little bit better. So I'm going to pop that out. There's no um, fast way of doing this but you speak to any artist it takes them for a long time to do a, a painting. That's the fast way of doing it. Uh, yes. <laughs> that? Oh well that is... <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> but I have lots of people complain to me that it's all right for me, they can't afford one. But they actually can afford one. You can pick up a, a H3-4, it's quite cheap now. Oh, um, X1D Mark IIs. 
Well, the second hand next on the Mark Ones. Yeah. Yeah, but again, that's still a lot of money for some people that might only be spending three thousand on their complete camera system. Yeah. They're not going to get it for that. But it's just it's one of those things that yeah, I'd love to have a Ferrari. We can only afford a certain level, but um, there's lots of situations I'd love to shoot my Hasselblad and I can't. So it might be pouring with rain, it could be dirty and dusty, uh, it could be super low lights because uh, I can't do the same low light I can do in the Sony. I might want that super shallow depth of field of 1.4, which well, I can get now with the new 80mm lens on the X, that the 1.8 is going to give me pretty much a feel of a 1.4. That's going to be less than that. Um, I think this is getting close. I'm, liking, I'm now looking at my halo. I don't want even halos. I like uneven halos because that's what I get off the Hasselblad software. And that's what I used to get off medium format film. If you over contrast it, you get this halo haloing effect. And this is what this is why I do this. This is a copy, and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I, so I can find it. Here's in my car area. Uh, personal. Oh, now they're going to see all my personal stuff. Food, car, car. So in here, yeah. See this halo there? This is what happens when you contrast large format. And that is the type of effect that that is how why I'm attracted to it. I look at a lot of my the old large format photos that I loved when I was young, and it had that haloing effect. So it's basically me being able to get that large format film effect into my pictures. And I think this is getting close. And again, there's no right or wrong, please. This is just, this is me showing you my style. My little dogs. A dog's about this big. So it has to make lots of noise so everybody else looks at it. Yeah, all right, so you can question up. I'm going to, this is this thing where I don't mind spending 15 minutes on what I'm doing or 20 minutes on what I'm doing now because. I call this art. This is now me slowly toning the picture to how I want to get that final feel. Uh, did you add, sorry, excuse me, did you add some grainy touch or noise? No. Nope. Nope, that was just how it was shot. That was how it was shot. That was, um, I can't remember my, in fact, I can quickly look it up. Come on, catch up. So it's still doing things in the background. Oh, it might be because it's doing the screen flow might be. Maybe. Could be. Look how slow it's behind. Ooh. Yeah, wow. It's skimpy. While you're doing that, do you want me to ask another question? Uh, yeah, I was just going to look and oh. see what ISO was on. I think, I don't think it would have been, come on, no, it stopped. Jeez, the lag is incredible. <laughs> it's really bad. Info. Come on, look how slow the lag is. Oh my god. It's not as fast as Beck. A nasty person. Oh, that might be the screen flap. Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. So this was shots. I saw 800. Yeah, so I've got a little bit of noise coming in because it shot at 800, but uh, yeah, I think it was a little bit way that I also worked my shadows and my highlights back in RAW would have accentuated that bit of graininess. Were you going to ask another question? Yeah, sorry, someone was just saying that I need to put the microphone more towards you. So, Sorry, uh, guys. I think this is just going flat. Oh. Can you grab can you remember yeah. what I told you to get? Yeah. All right, Tash. Yeah, sorry, my... <sighs> The new Apple laptops at the moment, every single one of our USB-C ports is taken and we've got a panel connected to it which has got another three on which are all taken and I can't plug my Wacom in and I think it might be going flat because it's lagging. Oh, it's caught up now. I don't know what it was. 
annoys me. Anyway, whatever it is, now it's still lagging. All right, what I might do. All right, so you'll see that latest layer has just brought that slight, see how it's just popping her off nicely now. I'm going to drop another layer over the top, but I'm gonna go the opposite with this. I'm gonna take it lighter. And I'm gonna turn my mask to black. I don't... Yeah, but I need the white charger for the Apple and I need a PowerPoint for you to plug it in somewhere. Um, so I'm gonna change my brush to white. So now I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of that up curve back into the middle of her, just a little bit. I think that might even be enough. Come on, hurry up. It's going very, I think it's not coping with us doing the live stream and the retouching, there we go. See how it's just popped that little bit up into the center. And this is getting really close. Now, earlier I told you about this magical thing called gradient map. Watch what happens when I drop this on there now. See how I've now popped this picture, but that's way too much for, for some pictures it's fine, but for this picture I find it too aggressive. So I pull it back to zero, and then I just, with a continual slow, mo motion, slow movement, bring it up until I go bang, that's it. If you zigzag back and forward, you get lost. If you just very slowly move it till bang, I like where that is sitting there now, um, that then gets me the picture as I want it. That's pretty much, I'm looking at the picture thinking that's about all I want to do with this picture. So if I do the before and after, so that's before any retouching, that's after. So you can see I've still got the essence. I haven't changed her expression. I haven't done anything, but I've now made this picture the look that I want. This was just shot in a uh, hotel room in Brisbane, just natural light playing with curtains. And I can then do this dodging and burning to get more of a, cinema, uh, more of a studio feel lit shot. Um, I've got my Hasselblad sort of glow sitting around it. So first thing I want to do is just save this out. And do, do. you're going to just see my, ah, Bex, digis. <laughs> uh, up in the cupboard over there. Top cupboard on that side. That side. Um, all right, so I don't want it saving as a Photoshop. I always save my stuff as TIFF, only because if my client doesn't have Photoshop, um, they can still see the thumbnail picture and it's just going to go into her processed file. So it's going to save out as a 16 bit TIFF. Hit OK. And this is my normal process and I might even go right through to posting this. It's so the very next thing I do, I made an action to do this. Oh no, I'll do it without action. So, so the very next thing I do now is I want to make this a sixteen, uh, an eight-bit picture. Which side's it on? Oh, it's on that side. That's all right. Just kill everything. Without bumping anything. Hopefully. That just keeps it charging. Um, so I want to make this. Uh, I want to make this. So at the moment, this picture here is um, hasn't been set to anything. I need to make this a Adobe RGB. Sorry, Ness RGB because Adobe RGB doesn't go in the web. And I want to flatten this image out, and I want to make it a eight bit. This is sixteen bit. Now, one of the problems is all these masks are only 8-bit. So if I flatten this picture now, then make it a 8-bit, when I do the transition from making it from 
um, 16 bit to 8 bit, it's flattened so there's no masks. But if I change this now to an 8 bit from 16 bit with all the masks there, all those masks will now start to do some blocking up. It'll give that horrible looking, oh, what's the name of it? Brain dead, maybe well called. Um, <laughs> a banding. So, and whenever you see banding, because I do a lot of work in these greys, it's really quick and easy. I don't know if you can see banding, and I think they does band a little bit in YouTube, but if I come in, you should see a little bit of banding. See those little fine lines? And if I keep on zooming in, and once I get to around about 100%, you'll see there's no banding whatsoever. If I was to convert this picture from 16-bit to 8-bit now with those masks open, it will band. So what I've got to do is flatten it before I do that change. So the first thing I do is, this is, I have an action, I normally do this, convert to profile. Once I've got this, I'm going to take it from Adobe RGB and convert it to sRGB to use on the web. You'll see my preview is clicked and you'll see when I click on it, the picture doesn't change, which means my picture is going to be identical to Adobe. Hit OK and you'll see this flattens my picture. Now I don't have any masks. Now I can come up to image mode and come to 8-bit. I think if I just saved it to JPEG now, it automatically does it to that, but I just do this anyway. My next stage from here is I've already saved off my TIFF layer. Notice no cropping, no sharpening. Yeah, that's my, how my work goes. No cropping, no sharpening. A lot of my work. But from here, I'm going to put this on, this, this will go into Instagram tonight. So just so you see, this is my standard quality of work. Once I finish this, we will upload this to Instagram. So from here, I am now going to size it to my size. Now, I will just use my actions. It's easy. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> I don't want to, but I can't. I'm just going to go to image, image size. I'm going to make my image um, 72. And I'm going to make my height 1080. The reason that is, it means that we can just use these, any of these finished pictures for web can be used in our videos at 1080p. Um, I've got my resampling to uh, by Cubic Smooth for Gradients. It's the only one I use. I don't use Auto because Auto is going to sharpen it. Hit OK. Ah. Now this is going to downsize the picture. I'm just going to bring it up to the full. So that's a full size image for the web. Now I will put a sharpen on for the web because the web is going to take an edge off this. So all I do is I'm going to copy this layer. If this was a color picture, I would desaturate this picture. This is black and white, so I don't need to do it. But I still come up to here and go to adjustments. I'm going to go to brightness contrast. And I'm going to decontrast this picture. And if this was a color picture, I would now go into, well, I'll just pretend it was a color picture. I'd go up to image, adjustments. I'd go to hue and sap. And I would desaturate here. Hit OK. So if this was a color picture, this is what it would look like right now. So the bottom picture is still the original picture. The top picture is a desaturated non-contrast, pull the contrast out. Now that I've done this, I go up to filter, come down to the amazing other, and go to high pass, and I found 0.4 works perfect for around the 1,000 pixel high area, so that's why it's instantly come up here. It's a standard thing I do. I hit OK, right? And you'll see there's a very fine, like, etching. That is the sharpening. Now all I use is my blending mode to where I want to sharpen. So if I just go overlay, and this is at full size for the web, if I just turn this on and off, you'll just see the catch light and the lashes very slightly come up a little bit. If this was a dark picture and I want to get more sharpening in the darks, I would come down and go vivid light. And you'll see each time I move over one of these, you'll see the picture changes. See how it's a fraction darker? Vivid light sharpens more the dark edges. Hard light sharpens more the light ed edges. Overlay, I find my favorite for just general sharpening. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to hit 
E to flatten it. Then on my main computer, I hit a button and it'll save this picture in five different places in five different sizes and five different formats for my web page, my blog, for my Insta, all of those things. But I don't have that set here. So I'm just going to save this copy. This, I'll just send this straight to my desktop. It'll just be a JPEG. Hit save and leave it at full size. And then the next thing I do after this is I will come to, well, we'll, come, we'll show if I go to the next screen or will it get all lost? It's, I, uh, what are you trying to do? Well, I need to see the background screen. Oh, uh, yeah, you can go to the next one. Right, so now what I'll do in here, you'll see that the picture is sitting. Oh, oh there. So with that, I will drag that and hopefully it'll work this way. Drop it on iPhoto. I know it sounds really dumb. And then if I come back into oh, oh yeah, we want. I don't know, I've moved everything everywhere. <laughs> so hopefully in iPhoto, I don't know what's gonna come up if I click this. Don't do that, actually, don't do that. Don't? No, don't do that. Uh, Kurt, can you close this please? Yeah, I'll just click that. Thanks. I will just want to show them how I go next. Yeah. Um, I'll quickly move it to zoom in. Oh, it's just got all that stuff in there. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I, I was see, like. <laughs> I can see where, yeah, we, we were getting storyboard work for uh, for a shoot and yeah, it's not appropriate for <laughs> for YouTubes. Um, so, did it drag in? Uh, it looks like it didn't. Yeah, so I've never taken it that way. So, well, normally I just drag it into my iPhoto, which means I can go to my iPhone and then I can just upload it off my iPhone. So, and that's the finish retouch to the end. Now I'll yes. hand it back to you. Thank you. Um, I will flick to just us. That just have. us. Well, because it's, otherwise it's got that be finished with all that. Mm. Oh, okay, cool. Um, again, apologies that my microphone isn't working. We did do testing before and it worked during testing, so I don't know what has happened. You broke it. I think it might have been something to do with the internet when the internet dropped, dropped down, out. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, with the image of Katie that you were just working on, you had three curve layers and the second one you didn't do anything on. Yeah, I did work on all three. Oh, did you? Oh. Yeah. So if I can... I what can... was the second one for? They were all, they were all just, just toning. Curves, yeah. toning. So I don't, you'll find, I'm just going to back this up. So if I go to my history and let's back up before I flattened. Do, 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 eight bit. Do, 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 do. If I go back to the saved area and then come back to my layers. Oh, oh no, yeah. <laughs> No, that's a mistake curve. That's oh. You'll see there's no dodging and burning. I must have accidentally hit curve twice. So I can delete that out. So yeah, curve one, curve three, curve four. It actually didn't make us bigger again. Sorry? It didn't make us bigger again. That's good though because you needed to show people that. Don't worry, talking to myself. Keep going, Peter, sorry. <laughs> <Didn't>. <laughs> yeah, so, and what I find is if you'll see that there's, oops, now if I get to the, there, that one. You'll see there's that curve there, and then the next one is another slight down curve. I can't just add that curve onto the other curve. It doesn't seem to work. And some of the pictures, I might have three down curves over the top of each other. They're just toning different. I work it for different parts of the picture. So it's nearly like different strengths of curve in my dodge and burn. Uh, Peter, can you show how to photograph ankle woman's back with Beck? Photograph a woman's back. I'm pretty sure that's what, I think that's what they're asking. Yeah, we can do that. We, we've it, we've is, done the back shot here, haven't we? We didn't film it. We didn't film it. No, we can do that. Well, the way we're situated, we've got six weeks that we... We can work to an extent, so we're allowed to do what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, we come under, at the moment, our, my business pretty much for the last three or four months has become uh, internet broadcasting and content. That's what we make now because the commercial world's gone on us. We've had, what, 
two yeah. commercial shoots in three months. Yeah. So with that, we can work, but we it's very hard. We can't get models in and things like that. So Beck and I have got to come up with ways of giving you really interesting content for the next six weeks. But I've just got to work with Beck. <laughs> but we've got to find stuff. I've got some really cool ideas about uh, shooting Beck in a sleeping bag. That'd be cosy. Uh, yeah, but so you can't see you. It's just a oh. lump of a sleeping bag. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we we can do that. But I'm certain we've done back shot. But it'd be it's really no different to this. It's just a look over the shoulder. I'd I if you saw those other pictures, um, I just work it. She wasn't topless. She you would have noticed in early. She I had she had a bra on. It's just this is how the if she had a top on, the top would add to the mood of this picture. Where is by not seeing clothes, you can't see a style to the mood, so it just becomes the model. Peter, what is the lowest megapixel you gosh? Maybe I should flick it to us. Yeah, flick it to us. Um, well, I need to be able to see what I'm doing if that's okay. Yeah, but if I go, no, no, and the camera just died, and that's not working. I need my sources, I need source, I need. Oh, maybe it's because it's yeah the camera's died so let right, me change I'll talk that. while the camera's died well i didn't know what the question was um, so right, i'll have a quick look uh, um lowest megapixel um i'd be quite comfortable shooting this on a six megapixel camera i know this sounds crazy but back when digital first came out i was shooting on a canon i think it was either called a d6 or a 6d it was equivalent quality to their old EOS one. It was a six megapixel uh, camera, very, very high quality, like all the workmanship and everything like that. Um, and that was good enough to get me cover of magazine. So if I can shoot a six megapixel and get cover of magazine, um, that's all I'd need. The one thing that a lot of photographers are getting completely lost in, megapixel does not mean quality. In fact, if anything, megapixel means worse quality of pixels. So the larger a pixel is, the better the dynamic range, the better the low light, the better the, um, the gradient of the light that's captured, the more better the color is. And the, the new Sony S, I'm really, really interested to see the difference between that and my Sony R3. Uh, I didn't go on a Sony R4 because I don't want 62 megapixels. It's I, There's no 50 megapixel Hasselblads. I don't even need that. I spoke to Hasselblad the other day and said, if I had my choice of the next Hasselblad camera, it would be maybe a 30, 35 megapixel true medium format, full size medium format. I'd be 100% happy with that. The reason is, is, all of you out there, when was the last time you printed anything, let alone print something big? And that whole argument of, oh, well, I can just shoot wide and crop what I want, that's really sloppy photography. A artist paints to the canvas size. He doesn't paint and then cut the picture out. If you want to be a true artist, you need to look through the viewfinder, create your image, and then shoot your image to the viewfinder. And that was just me ranting. Next. Yeah. How many pictures do you retouch on your private non-commercial shoots? Sometimes it's only one. <laughs> yeah, in fact, my private non-commercial, unless it's a series, mm. but a lot of times I only retouch the very best picture that I see. And that's it. That was uh, the whole idea of the shoot was to create that image. And that's what I was after. But then you get the odd shoot like this one with Katie where you've, oh, you've retouched yeah. a few of them, but that's because she was amazing model. <laughs> she was good and we, we shot for about three hours, I think it yeah. was, and we did do a, a few looks with her. Um, but, yeah, that's nothing for me to shoot four hours for one single frame because yeah. that's what we're after. And it might have been the lighting set up took two hours or odd and then getting the model into the right mood and the look and then me getting my act together and getting the shot. But, yeah, there's a lot of my artwork that hasn't been published or shown anywhere yet where the entire shoot was after one frame. And quite often when Beck and I shoot, mm. what are we after? One shot. 
Right, so toilet paper shoes, oh, Tarantino yeah, just like shoes. the one shot, yeah. One shot. We yeah. saw so, the, the stuff like the implied nude on the streets in New York, that was for one frame. And yeah. everything, we sort of, we, we come up with our idea, we decide on how we're going to do it, and we go out and get that shot. Just one. Just one. Just one. Uh, Peter, <coughs> Beck drops the microphone. Uh, <laughs> they've heard some people talking about ISO having very little to do with noise, but more about the lack of light creating noise. Any thoughts? Technically, I don't know about that. With the older cameras, definitely. It could be, look, that could be the case, but now the well, it's not really a noise anymore. Uh, the digital doesn't have that. So what? All right. So let's me backtrack. If you look at the old early digital cameras, you only had grain in the shadows. You didn't have it in the highlights, and that's why it looks so ugly. So back on my old cameras, if we had to shoot low light we would then introduce noise over the whole picture afterwards. So we had noise in the highlights and the shadows, then it was acceptable. And it's no different to film pictures, uh, because film, the grain would be through, right from through the blacks right into the highlights. Everything would have grain in it. Nowadays, um, definitely Hasselblad and the Sony, uh, because that's what I'm shooting the most, that's where I see, the reason I shoot Hasselblad a lot at 800 ISO, it creates this grain, and that grain feel sits right through the full range of the highlights through to the shadows. Um, so yeah, it's it's whereas the old noise used to only sit from 18% grey backwards. A gradient map is the best way to convert images to black and white, much better than straight monochrome conversion. Um, on Inspire, we did a thing on. Oh no, he's he's agreeing. He's uh, saying no, it yeah. is on Inspire. We did a thing about all the different ways of converting. Yeah, and a really interesting thing if you want to play around it yourself, just have your pictures put a black layer above it, set that black layer blending mode to color, and that will give you a perfect neutral black and white convert. Then use all your other different, like the black and white layer versioning or any other thing, put it above it. And you, then you can turn on and off that black layer and it'll show you how much the black and white convert has affected different colors. And you actually see that in the color picture, that yellow looked brighter than the blue, but when you used uh, Adobe's black and white converting area, the fil uh, so the layer black and white, all of a sudden now the blue area became lighter than the yellow area. So it's just that, that's a, you know, we do it on Spy. We might have to do another one for okay. YouTube. We can do that. And good to see the glass of red wine, of course, always. Uh, Steph would like to know, is it better to include the belly button in a torso shot? It's entirely up to what you want to create, I guess. You've got to hang up with belly buttons. Yeah. Or if it's an ugly belly button. Or if it's an off-centre belly button, you wouldn't want it. But some of those smiley face belly buttons are cool. Oh. <laughs> that, that comes down to, there's no right or wrong. Seriously, you if you like it, do it. It's, it's that simple. Don't, don't listen to anybody else. If you look at it, I don't think I've ever thought about belly buttons. So unless it was something... <laughs> that caught my eye and was distracting, yes. But quite often I'll re-crop to get belly buttons in or out depending on the picture I'm shooting. That's fair. And apparently you were, you could have used the action to make up for me pouring a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just out of interest, why didn't you use the image processor script to flatten and convert to sRGB? Because I've never done it. <laughs> Well, there you go. That's the thing. I have my own. I have my own action for all. A lot of what you see, I have actions. So I just press the one button. It does. It actually. Um. I, it's my F. Well, it's only one minute. Where's my F keys? Function. My F twelve key will convert it, flatten it, change it to eight bit. That's what I have that button set for. So I have certain keys set for certain things, but. I wanted to show you step by step how I do things. Um, apparently, with all this time, you can shoot film. <laughs> yeah, but if I shot back now, 
I can't do the developing thing. It gives oh. me headaches. So I'd have to send it off to be developed. And you're not going to enjoy watching us for five hours while we send it off and get developed. <laughs> and we can't now. Right. Film processing is not allowed in Victoria oh, right. at the moment. No. Yeah, we can't. We're not allowed. Film processing is illegal in Victoria at the moment. Uh, John said, thank you for the pixel info. Did Beck ever get to hear music from a record player? I've got to turn to – I haven't put one on yet, have I? I don't think I actually ever have heard music from a record player. Oh, tomorrow I promise I'll put my – I'll put some Zeppelin. I'll put – Does it sound there. any different? Yeah, it's so much nicer. It's like film. Yeah. Vinyl to music is like what film is to digital uh, – photography do you think they have side trance on vinyl no oh, <laughs> oh no that would be because there'll, there'll be djs that are still using vinyl to mix <laughs> so it's, it's making a haha um i don't know send send mandra a friggin message and say is any of your stuff on vinyl might be it might be i can just look it, it up because it's a big area you could put his face on I want Thank actually. You. I think he did release his last album on we are looking we're just ranting yeah. we are um Apparently your photo is so amazing. Which oh, which one? The one that you just did. Oh, I thought that might have been. Oh, maybe that, that one. one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, John said, "Hi guys, excellent to see you live." Hello. Can you ask? Uh, can you ask us uh, both in regards to our thoughts on camera sharpness? Seen a few times that uh, you don't aim at ultra sharp shots. How do you prefer to go about this? Well, personally, I don't take photos, so I don't really have much of an opinion. Yes, you do. Well, do you want every pore of your skin razor sharp? Oh, no, I don't. No. <laughs> no. Do most models want want their skin to be sharp? Mm -hmm. No. It's um, So one of the things that I, I have a, a progression, if you think about it carefully, um, when the old, like back in the 60s, 70s, uh, the portrait photographers were putting things like Vaseline on their lenses, they're putting stockings over their lenses, uh, dusting their lenses, doing different things like that to just soften off the lens. Uh, we got into digital in the early days of digital. The very first thing we... Sheree, yeah. can you not? Um, in the ve very early uh, days of digital, the very first thing people started doing was blurring the skin everywhere except the eyes and the mouth mm. and look disgusting printed. Then they started frequency separation to blur the skin. Um, so it's all this blurring. So I have this thing that, um, especially with skin, I, I like to, if I'm shooting on manual, I will defocus forward. I'll pull um, you know, maybe three or four mils forward from the catch light in the eye. If I'm shooting in... Uh, uh, an autofocus mode i'll let the autofocus grab and just lean back a fraction as i shoot it's just my look i tended to find i'd go through a batch of pictures and go oh my god i love this picture oh it's a bit soft so i'd look at the frame either side which were identical but razor sharp and didn't like them as much and actually realized that the frame that was a bit soft was the identical expression as well it's just it was the softness that was making that picture look good and if you look at the greats, especially one of my favorites, Peter Lindbergh, you look at his book, half of it is soft, not a bit soft, a lot soft. And a lot of the stuff in Vogue is soft because it's like vinyling or film. Film, you would have the emulsion on it. So no matter how sharp and at your lens were, you'd still have this softening by the emulsion on top of the picture. Uh, another good thing to play around with, just get a picture that's razor sharp and then drop some grain over the top and then defocus the grain a little bit and you watch that picture just take this beautiful mood into it. But I am I am someone who really enjoys looking at film, but I have to work in digital. So it might just be how my eyes tuned. But I know I don't like watching movies with a lot of CGI. I don't like sites like 500 pics i don't like or any of those photography sites because everyone over sharpens surreally saturates and contrasts i don't like oled tv set into demo mode because they're super saturated they're super over sharpened and it to me always feels computer generated not like it's real i uh, go back to put your hand next to the screen 
and if your image is sharper than your hand, it's not real. It's now looking computer generated. Apparently, you should look at the image processor script. It's quick and easy. Uh, I guess like you've already got the action that does it. Yeah, I can do it, but yeah. Mm. Um, apparently, appreciate anything that you try. Apparently, try to get Doctor Brown's enhanced version of the script. I don't. You can look it up for me. Okay. That's the best job for tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> um, funny, you mentioned about vinyl and film. Dave's got a friend who does who plays vinyl and also shoots film. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's look, I'm an old sound person, and I've done this before. If you're ever in a proper acoustic studio. And stand next to a drummer hitting a snare. Every time he hits a snare, you'll blink. If you go into the control room and they've recorded it digitally and they play it back in their monitors in the control room, every time that snare is hit, you'll blink. If you record that on tape or record it digitally and put it onto vinyl, you'll never blink again. So it's that taking that harshness off which makes it more appealing. Um, we better wrap this up soon just because it's getting close to curfew and I need oh, yeah, to get, get home. home. <laughs> so, uh, Otherwise she gets locked up. That's the idea. You get locked up. Oh, well. I need to go home and cook dinner as well. Um, Peter, where do you think digital photography will be in 10 years? Example, Adobe RGB is the primary colour space on the internet. Instagram allowing larger images. Computer. Instagram won't exist. You don't think so? No. No, in 10 years, a lot will change, but I think you'll find that um, we'll only be working raw. There'll be nothing but raw till our final output, and we'll be outputting for web or outputting for, to print only. We will find that the world will be more virtual, more surreal. We won't be maybe 10 years, 20 years, it might be more it won't be a little unit like this it'll be in a space that floats like a vr type of environment um who knows what's going to happen but there's always going to be a place for film photography and standard beautiful portrait photography that'll always be there when uh, cameras were invented all of the painters thought that was the end of their careers paintings still paintings still sell more than photos so uh, john who asked about the sharpening said that his camera, he's got a Canon 700D, 18 megapixel, and it's not the sharpest, but maybe he should relax about that aspect. Yeah, don't. The only people that care about sharpen is lens and camera manufacturers and photographers. The end user who's looking at the picture don't care. They just want a really beautiful picture. And I see so many people, and I used to myself, I used to really worry about sharpening. Now, I don't care. In fact, I purposely defocus to get looks. Uh, DJ would love for more camera manufacturers to stop worrying about creating hybrid cameras and concentrate on still photography. So, Yeah, it's hard. (laughs) Um, Because it's someone like me who wants to shoot uh, well, I'm shooting more and more film and video. It's quite handy with the Sony's having it all in one. Um, but look, I am with you. I'm, that's this, the S I'm buying predominantly as a video camera and my A7 uh, R3 is my stills camera I use to do video because the S2 is quite old now and the focusing's a bit not as good as the modern cameras but yeah um it's hard uh, you've got to think of people that don't have much money then what's in us in australia is worth what, six thousand dollars or something so now if you've got to have a film and a video camera six that's twelve thousand dollars outlay if you have it all in one camera that's just saved you half decline uh, would you desaturate e100 E one hundred. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure. I don't know what the question is. Sorry. Sorry. Are you talking about? Uh, yeah, talking I'm about not film sure. Before I don't know if that uh, means might have been a film. I don't. I never used E one hundred. So if it, so, I I had I was shot altered a lot and Kodak. Um, they were my main films, but. A lot, a lot of my photography 
work. I was only a hobby photographer until I was. I was a photography, hobby photography until I started working for a magazine. So all of my film days was done more as a hobby. It was, and I wasn't like over the top. It was I just carried a camera with me, enjoyed taking the odd picture. Uh, once I started working commercially, that's when I um, I was mainly working, um, except for maybe two or three years on EOS One, and then I was shooting Velvia and Provia film for magazines on trannies. But from then I've been shooting digital. So the whole fi the film thing just doesn't work commercially. It's just too slow. Clients will not put up for that length of time. They want to see the picture on set. They want to see what the workings like. That's why we shoot tethered. They want to see the final picture as I'm taking it. So that's why we use cameras at tether. They can see the image. I can do my raw work. I had a client who was into the whole wank factor about announcing this was shot on large format. And I said, not one of the people that are going to buy your clothes give a rats about that. It's a you thing. It's going to cost you $300 per frame. And all of a sudden, we shot it on digital. Uh, it is seven o'clock, so we right. probably should yeah. wrap this up. Um, and just quickly, why do you shoot on black and white, not color? So I love black and white. <laughs> Hover cameras in the future. Sorry? Hover cameras in the future. Hover? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you just throw it out there, just hovers. <laughs> uh, Bruce said that they're thinking about us down here in Victoria. Thank you very much. We appreciate oh, it. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I so. Oh, there we go. Um, and Peter went last last one and then we have to go. Um, Peter, when you push the camera button, is it a gut feeling or what the model gives you? Uh, my best pictures are from what the model gives me. When the, when the model forces me to push that. Uh, thing when I'm shooting on the Sony, the gut feeling says hold your finger down and let the motor drive to two more frames. The second frame might be better. When I'm shooting on a Hasselblad, it's just straight out. As soon as I see what I want in the model's eyes, bang, grab it. Or when I anticipate they're going to do something, bang, grab it. Cool. Well, we have to wrap this up because it is seven o'clock down here in Melbourne. Um, we will be Beck doing. We'll get locked up if she's in any <laughs> on the streets after eight. And my mum keeps trying to call me because she doesn't realise I'll call her back when I see a missed call. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, a sass. <laughs> Hate to be Vex, mum. Um, we it. we're going to do. Uh, we must we must try and get two lives a week done, especially for Victorians. We're going to do one during the day for every Victorian who's locked in their house. Can't have a visitor. Um, you're going to have to become vegetarians because <laughs> we can't <laughs> buy meat. <laughs> anyway. Sucks to be Victorian. It does. <laughs> Most livable oh. city in the world. Melbourne? Yes, yes. <laughs> Wesley said she is. She is, Wes. Um, yeah, so we're going to try and keep doing a lot more of these and I will try and figure out what the, the hell has gone wrong with my microphone because, as I said, it worked during testing, so... I don't know, and I apologise, guys, but we'll figure that out. We'll make sure that the next one's a little bit better. And this picture will be on my Instagram account in about half an hour, and we've got our Inspire web page in, in, in the links below of all our web pages. All so, that stuff. And there's a the, 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 we should need to put blogs on there as well because every week now, because I'm not shooting as much, it's left me time to go back to all my shoots that weren't shot as one photo shoots. They were shot as blogs. And it's also stuff that I can't put up on Insta or Facebook. I refuse to ban or blur stuff. But it's more fashion art and my artwork, which I'm putting up every Monday. I'm trying to put up a five or ten picture blog. Cool. 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 Thank you, guys. We love you all. Thank you for the support. Um, we love you all. Oh. Yeah, we do. Well, we do. We need to be nice. You're the one who told me I need to be nice to people. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>